that even mean, Bowers Game Corner? Oh, hey there, YouTube. We're back again today for another game review. And today I'm very excited checking out Clever Castle from Think Fun. This is for one player for ages five to seven. It'll take you uh, quite a good deal to get through the booklet. And in Clever Castle, you're going to be taking control of dragons and knights and fair maidens trying to figure out where they go in the castle by looking at a puzzle booklet trying to figure out how to copy the pictures from the puzzle onto your castle in front of you. Sound intriguing? Let's open it up and see how it works. All right, we're taking a look at Clever Castle on our handy-dandy grip mat, which turns every game into a space game. So first and foremost, we have our handy-dandy rule booklet. It is 12 pages, uh, double-sided, full color, very well done. It's a very, very simple game. It'll have you up and running in no time, and once you use it once, you'll probably never need it again. Also, I do want to mention, the last four pages are just a parent's guide where they'll help you out and give you some tips on how to, uh, you know, get your child into the game and give them positive reinforcement, stuff like that, which I think is a very nice little touch. They didn't need to put that in there, and and they did, and I like that an awful lot. <clears throat> so in this game, what you're going to be doing is you're going to have your nice castle right here. It's uh, it's plastic, it's sturdy, it's very thick, it's probably not going to bend or break unless you really try to do it. And it's going to have nine slots on there where you are going to be putting your three fair maidens, your three knights, and your three dragons, which you have over here once again. Uh, very nice, thick, sturdy components. They're plastic. Uh, three colors, uh, three different people. And you'll be putting them into the castle using this book right here, which we'll show you in a second. Before we do that, I do want to mention that there's a drawstring bag, which holds everything aside from the board, which I thought was an odd choice. Uh, but still having it, I guess, is kind of nice, because the box, let me tell you, will just get beaten and dilapidated up. Uh, at least mine did. So... Moving onward, let's get to this book right here. So in this book, this is the challenge book, and you're going to have challenges number 1 through 40. There's going to be easy, and then once you get to number, I believe it's 11, it'll get to medium, and then it'll get to hard, and then it will get to super hard. So let's take a look at some of the sample ones you're going to get, and then we'll go ahead and do one so you can see how the game works. So we're just starting off, you know, this is really for the younger children just to say, okay, we're just going to put everything, we're just going to essentially copy this from here. Uh, we're going to copy it and then we're going to put it onto here. So they'd say, oh, red, 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 yellow, 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 blue, blue, blue. We need the knights all over here, the dragons. We're not going to do it because that's super simple. We'll, we'll keep moving on. And then now they've mixed it up a little bit. Uh, I do want to mention, though, that they show you the answer key. So this is the problem, and then they'll have the answer on the other side so the child can check to make sure they got it right. Then, puzzle number three, they really start to spice things up because now there are two pictures that you have to do. So essentially, you're going to be using both of these pictures in order to successfully create the one on your board. And then they'll have the answer right there and as you can see they move on to three and they will get gradually more complex now once you get into the medium they'll start doing something else that's kind of interesting what they're going to start doing is they're actually going to start cutting off little bits of the square which uh, you know for us is really simple but when you're a child and when you watch your child play this it's really going to be mind-boggling to them and it's just uh, it's just how their brains work so as you can see they're getting more and more complex until we get to the hard Hard. And, and as you can see, this one is really much more complex than we started with. And we'll go ahead and we'll do some. We'll do a super hard one, so you can see exactly what kind of things you're dealing with here. So we'll do this super hard one right here. And in the super hard ones, that's when they actually start really making it difficult by actually not even including all of them. Sometimes, so let's see, two, four, six, seven, eight, nine. So this isn't a good example. Some of them only have eight list, uh, eight of the different pieces figured uh, on there. So you have to figure out that ninth piece that isn't even listed. So let's go ahead and show you how this works. So for instance, I would look at this one first and I'd say, all right, I know that blue dragon is going to go on the bottom left, and I know that blue knight is going to go right there in the middle. Now, ooh, that one, this is actually pretty easy right here. So we know the yellow, dra uh, yellow knight's right there, and we know that the yellow dragon is going to go right there. Look at us! We know the blue guy, or the blue lady, she's right there. Very nice. Pretty simple. Now the dragon, the red dragon, we're not exactly sure where that red dragon is going to be because it could be right here or it could be right there. So we're going to wait on that red dragon. We'll go down here. We got the red knight right there. We got the red lady right here, which means now we can go back to our red dragon. We know the red dragon is going to be there, which means that yellow lady, uh, which could have been right here or right here, is going to be right here. And let's make sure we got that right. Let's take a look. 
uh, and it looks like it is good. So we have successfully completed that one. Now what they recommend is that you take them all back off, put them back onto your board over here so you get a fresh start each time. And I do think that's a great idea when you're playing with children. And then you would move on to the next puzzle. And there are 40 challenges in this little book. And that, in a nutshell, is how you play Clever Castle. Oh, great dokery. Clever Castle from Think Fun. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First on the con side, the game's not going to be for, well, a lot of people. It's for ages 5 to 7. Uh, I think that's a good age range. I would say I'd say ages 4 to 7. Um, but yeah, I think when you get to that 4 and even 5 year olds, they're going to they're going to hit a wall at a certain point. So I definitely think ages 6 and 7 are going to enjoy this game the most and not get nearly as frustrated as some of the younger children will. Uh, but moving back on to the cons, you know, it's it's for a very limited age range. This isn't like uh, Gravity Mage, which is another game that ThinkFud made that was a solo game where you could play it when you're an adult or when you're a kid or a teenager. This one is definitely for the younger crowd. So not going to be for game night. It's one player. You know, it's it's very simple once you get older, and those are all going to be cons. Another con that I had was more on the component-wise, uh, component side of things, was the bag they give you. Uh, so let's let's break this down. This is a children's game. This is a solo children's game, which means your box is going to end up looking like that and just getting destroyed. But they have this drawstring bag in there, which was like, that's a great idea to have this bag in there. But the problem with the bag is the board doesn't fit into the bag, which I thought was a gross oversight. I mean, because eventually that box is probably going to get ruined and you're going to have to move everything into a different container. So if you could fit all of the components into that bag, that would be fantastic. However, you can fit all of the components in there except for the board, which I thought was an odd selection. Um, other cons I have on it, you know, once once they get to a certain age range, the game is going to completely not be interesting to them at all. And that's about all I got. Moving on to the pros, I enjoyed Clever Castle a lot. It's one I brought into my classroom, and it went over really, really well. And I work with kids uh, three to five. Now, I haven't played it with any three-year-olds yet. However, I played it with four-year-olds and five-year-olds, and they both really enjoyed it. I will say, though... It, they get to a certain point, as I mentioned in the cons, where they're just going to hit that brick wall and it's, it's just like you're trying to push them through quicksand. It's really difficult. But it's fun to see them finally, like, when it starts clicking in their head, they're like, oh, that one goes on the top and here, and that one goes on the bottom. Oh, that one's in the, it's got to be in the middle because the red dragon's in the middle. And I love that moment. And I love that moment as a teacher. And I imagine you're going to love it even more as a parent. Because this game, what you're really what you're really still sitting on this video for is should I get this for my kid? And the answer is yes. Period. End of this discussion. It is a fantastic young children's game for when kids are aged four to seven, I'd say. And I would say five to seven is a good age range there as well. Uh, and that's that's just the bottom line. It is a must-own game if you like having games to play with your kids ages five to seven, or specifically if you want to really get your kids into the hobby. Because I think if you can get your kids playing solo games by themselves at a young age, they're really going to get into the hobby because when they do get to play with other people, they'll just be like, yes, I get to play with mom or dad or grandma or Uncle Rick or creepy Uncle Scott or whoever. Uh, but <laughs> getting off topic here. Um, Clever Castle is a fantastic game. This is the second uh, Think Fun solo game that I've played this year and I enjoyed them an awful lot and I think once your child gets old enough to really master this you can probably bump them on up to Gravity Mage which is another great game. Uh, overall Clever Castle, Think Fun, if you have a child ages 5 to 7, highly recommend this game. Also I do want to say this is a game that you should keep your eyes open for at a thrift shop. I found mine at a uh, Goodwill for like a dollar and let me tell you it was well worth the money. This is what I'm going to be bringing to my classroom for a very long time, probably until my son gets to be of age to play it and then he'll be playing the heck out of it. Uh, overall, Clever Castle, think fun, check it out, a lot of fun. If you enjoyed this content, please be sure to click on the subscribe button. Also, in the comments down below, let me know, do you like Risk? Do you hate Risk? What's your favorite version of Risk? Because that was my first gateway game that just got me into it, and I loved Risk, and then I went back and revisited a couple years, and I was like, Okay, you know, this is a little bit outdated. I do want to play Risk Legacy, though, so uh, let me know in the comments below what you think about Risk. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.
That was the review for Clever Castle. For more reviews and previews, check back at Bowers Game Corner.